One of the other names for these air source heat pumps is a ductless mini split because it's got, it's split, it's got a part inside and a part outside. And Pioneer Valley Habitat usually does ductless, there's no ducts. Every heat pump can be an air conditioner. Not every air conditioner can be a heat pump. When you're creating all that cooling, you do it on the inside coil in air conditioning mode and the hot gas stays outside uh, at the condenser. Heating is the exact opposite and the expansion happens now inside instead of outside and you're um, creating a heat inside and you're, you're exhausting the cool air outside. The bonus with heat pumps is that they can cool the house just as easily as they can heat it. A no cost benefit and in the case of cooling instead of sucking the heat from the outside air and putting it inside you can reverse the process and you can take the heat from inside and put it out and now we're talking something that's exactly like a refrigerator. That means, though, that you need to take your device like this and you take it down and you look at the mode and you push the mode button and you switch it from the heating mode to the air conditioning mode. You would decide at some point in May or something like that to make this change and you would shift the system from heating mode to cooling mode. That's typically the way it works. People are used to these systems that just dump heat, right? Um, so, so much heat in an inefficient way. But with a system like this, you just want to leave it the same all the time, and it will still use less energy than if you're doing that cycling up and down. Yeah. By having just one head, there's certain things you achieve. You know, greater efficiency, greater simplicity, less maintenance, those are all great things. However, distribution of the heat throughout the house becomes more of a challenge, because you're not ducting it to all the individual rooms. If you've lived before in a house that's heated by fossil fuels, a furnace, or something like that, you could probably have uh, noticed that if you set back the thermostat at night and let the house cool down in the night and then put it up in the morning, that that's a way to save energy. And that's become a popular thing uh, in our society over the past few generations. Heat pumps do not work that way. You do not save energy by setting back a heat pump and it's not necessary. We build these houses tight and with high levels of thermal insulation to reduce the heat loads. Heat pumps depend on maintaining a status quo. So you set the thermostat for comfort and leave it that way. And the only reason to set it back to a, a lower temperature is if you're leaving the house for an extended period, like a week or more. If you have a ductless mini split, it will be warmer near the head and cooler further away. You may need to turn up the heat in the living room to get the bedrooms to your preferred temperature. It's simple, it just pulls up no tools or anything, it just pulls up. Um, you'll hear a little clicking noise as it pulls up. These pop right out. There's two of them, that one is identical to this one. Both of them have these little optional filters in them as well. These don't do anything to protect the unit. There's another one in here, it's called a titanium filter. It's a small blue one, pops out the same exact way. Um, these don't normally need to be cleaned. They can be replaced. You can find them online pretty easily. And I would imagine it wears out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But either way, you don't need to wash these because they are on the inside of the filter. Uh -huh. They should not get dirty. Uh, and you can replace them absolutely if you want to, and I think that's up to every user how they want to do that. The best way to clean these is under a sink. So if you're looking at these, the dust comes in that way, which means it gets stuck here, which means you want to wash it out this way. So hold it under the sink, wash it out as much as you can. Garden hose is fine too. And then I usually do both sides anyway, and then I wipe them dry. You can use a vacuum too. It certainly works if there's a lot of heavy dust on it, but the vacuum doesn't quite clean as well as, uh, as water does. Um, they don't have to be perfectly dry when you put them back in, but if you do put them in wet at all, then make sure you run the unit for a little while after so the air can dry them out naturally. I wouldn't want it to be wet and sitting in there in a unit that's not running for a long time. The manufacturer suggests every two weeks. If they're running 24-7, you have dogs in the house, you have all kinds of dust going on, maybe every two weeks is necessary. Two weeks is assuming high fan speed, 24-7 running, worst case scenario. I recommend checking them probably at first every two weeks just to make sure. That way I'm not going against what the manufacturer recommends, but um, certainly real life experience every two months in my house has been fine. If you can see dust, clean them. If you can't really see, if they still look perfectly blue throughout and you can't really tell there's dust on them, I think they're just fine. Put it right in your calendar, that way you don't forget. It is pretty important. 
could save a service call, it could save the equipment longevity, and it's certainly gonna make the unit more efficient. And put them back in, just slides right in, no tools, clicks in and that's it. This unit, panel comes down, you can hear it pop in place, and that's it. Yeah, so the homeowners in general, they have to clean the filters and these indoor heads on a regular basis. They have to make sure uh, there aren't five feet of snow burying the outside condenser. Right. Um, but they're elevated off the ground, so hopefully that won't be a problem. And, but otherwise, just they need to schedule an annual maintenance visit with uh, HVAC technicians, make sure everything's clean, and make sure there aren't any signs of damage or anything. Since everything's electric, it's from your water heating to the lights on to the heat and all of those things to say, all right, you know, maybe we're going to use a little more energy this year because it's extra cold or we have lots of heat waves and you air condition a lot in the summer. There's these balance between money and comfort that the homeowners have to make choices on throughout the year. Each year is different weather wise. Each homeowner has different needs for how they live in their house. Some people go to work and leave their house all day. Some people are home all day and that uses more energy. So behavior, your decision of how you want to uh, live in your house is going to make a big difference. You can decide to have lights on uh, all over the place all the time or not. You can decide that you want to set your heating thermostat level at, uh, let's say, somewhere between 60, 68 and, and 75. Your decision on what that set point is will make a difference in how much it costs you to run the house and in some respects, therefore, how efficient you are in uh, living. You'll find there's a very big difference in electricity bills between uh, those kind of decisions.